With the online world we are living in today, it has become incredibly easy for job applicants to apply to hundreds of different job opportunities. Because of that, it means that most job postings are going to get 100 or more applications. In fact, according to a website called legaljobs.io, which I'm sure is super legitimate, it says that the average job posting will get 118 applicants. 118 applicants! So how are you supposed to compete with that many other candidates? Well, I'm glad you're here because by the end of this video, you're going to see that although there seems to be a lot of competition in the entry-level actuarial job market, it really isn't that competitive. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we show future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their very first actuarial job. About nine months ago, I did a study of 100 entry-level actuarial job postings, and I really did this to find out trends in what actuarial employers were looking for. In doing that, I found that there were five main qualifications that actuarial employers were looking for over and over and over again. Those five qualifications were one, a bachelor's degree, two, actuarial exams, three, technical skills, four, related experience, and five, communication skills. And these are the qualifications that make up a top actuarial candidate. It's important to know that all five of these elements kind of come together in order to form a top candidate. You need to have all five of them in order for actuarial employers to really consider you to be one of the best candidates out there. Without a bachelor's degree, for example, you're probably not going to get a job because pretty much every single employer is requiring a bachelor's degree now. It doesn't have to be in actuarial science or stats or math necessarily, but you do need that degree. If you don't have any actuarial exams passed, well then it's going to be hard to prove to employers that you're actually able to pass the actuarial exams. And also some of the early exams give you that foundational knowledge that is going to be better beneficial when you are working in an actuarial role. In terms of technical skills, if you don't have great technical skills, then you're probably going to find that it's hard to actually do the work that actuaries do, especially in the entry level positions, because a lot of the time you're using Excel, you're using programming languages quite frequently. So an employer is unlikely to hire someone that doesn't have great technical skills because they probably won't be able to perform well on the job. If you don't have related experience, well then it's going to be hard to prove to employers that one, you can keep a job, and two, just they need to know that you have some experience that you can draw on. Maybe that you've worked in the corporate environment before and you know how it all works. Maybe you have some data analysis experience or maybe you have some insurance related experience. Those kind of things really increase your candidacy for actuarial positions. And there were probably about 56% of employers looking for someone that had related experience. So this is going to be a really beneficial thing for you to have in order to get an actuarial job and stand out. If you don't have great communication skills, then it's probably going to be fairly difficult for you to get a job in the first place. You might have trouble creating a resume that really makes you stand out. You might have trouble during the interview and explaining yourself. So those things alone might make it hard to get an actuarial job. But employers are also looking for these skills because as an entry-level actuary, you have to be able to explain your work to people that may not understand exactly what actuaries do. For example, a lot of the time when I was working in actuarial roles, I was in communication with the legal team, the finance team, the investments team, and all other sorts of teams around the company. Many of them had absolutely no idea what we did as actuaries, so we had to be able to explain what we were doing in simplified terms that were more general generalized so that we could communicate what we were doing to others that aren't in the actuarial team. So communication skills are essential as well. And without just one of these qualifications, you're probably going to decrease your chances of being able to get an actuarial job. And that's why top candidates will have all five of these qualifications. So you see, most unguided future actuaries don't know this stuff. They don't. And when I say unguided future actuary, basically what I mean there is someone that doesn't have the guidance and support support of someone like an actuarial mentor or maybe a club at school. There are lots of future actuaries out there that don't have this support. And when you don't have that available to you, it's really difficult to know what you need to do in order to succeed in the actuarial field. So to those future actuaries, it can really appear that the actuarial job market is so competitive. It appears that way from the outside because there are hundreds of candidates applying for almost every single actuarial job. But the thing is that 
most of them only have one, two, maybe three of the five qualifications that we talked about. In fact, there was an article on the Workopolis website that stated that employers say that sometimes up to 75%, 75% of applicants for any given job post are not even qualified for the job, 75%. So that's not specific to actuarial roles, but I do imagine that for actuarial jobs, that percentage, 75%, would be about the same or maybe even higher because of the unique and specialized skill set that most actuarial employers are looking for in great candidates. And in that same article, it even went on to say that only the top 2%, the top 2% of candidates tend to make it into the interview process. So that means that 98% of them are completely eliminated from possibly getting hired based on their resume screening. Only the top 2% get interviewed. Well, the same thing applies in the actuarial career. So from the outside, Side, it appears like there's so much competition. Like I said, there are 118 applicants on average for any job posting, and I'm sure that's the same for actuarial jobs, maybe even more sometimes. So there appears to be a lot of competition. But the thing is that the majority of those candidates aren't fully qualified for the job. They're applying to it and hoping that they'll be able to get the interview even though they don't meet all the requirements that the employer has set forth. But the thing is that top actuarial candidates are eligible for those jobs in most cases. And those are the orange ones that you're seeing on your screen. Those are the ones that are going to really stand out. If you become a top actuarial candidate, you take the competition completely out of the picture. You become one of the only and one of the best candidates out there and that's what actuarial employers start to focus on. Those are the people that they want to hire. So you see, if you become a top candidate, one of those top 2% as Workopolis calls them, then you are going to get that interview. No, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're guaranteed to get the job, but if you are one of the top 2% candidates for actuarial jobs that you apply to, which you will be if you're a top candidate, then it's inevitable that you will eventually be the number one choice for one of those employers that you get interviewed with. You just have to find the employers that want exactly what what you're offering. Is this making sense to you? If it is, please give this video a thumbs up or comment down below and let me know. So you see, yes, for any given actuarial job, there is a lot of competition. But once you become a top candidate, which you can be by following the top candidate method, the job market becomes uncompetitive because there are only a few candidates at that top candidate level. Now, because you've been watching this video, every time you see this little orange stick figure, you're going to know exactly what that means. That little stick figure is going to remind you that if you work towards becoming a top candidate, you're going to be able to stand out. You're going to be able to get noticed. You're going to be able to make the competition disappear from the picture. And you're going to be able to give yourself the best possible chance of getting an actuarial job. And actually, if you become a top candidate, I 100% believe that it's inevitable that you'll eventually get an actuarial job. It's just a matter of time. Okay, so now if you thought that there was a lot of competition in the actuarial career and I have now changed your mind, then next you should go watch this video where you'll uncover five outdated pieces of advice that many unguided future actuaries are still making, but really shouldn't be. That's all for today. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.